media. Events of national, global significance. What sort of national events make headlines in your country? Any big political movement, a success or failure by our national sports team, a natural disaster, a new law, any brutal crime, national festivals or misconduct by any renowned politician would usually make headlines in our newspapers. Any big success by our scientists, engineers, researchers would also make headlines. Sometimes news editors pick some interesting and comical events to presence at the headlines of their newspapers as well. Does the media in your country pay more attention to global or national events? We have more than 100 daily newspapers and more than 20 TV channels that mainly focus on our nationals events. But that does not mean that they ignore the important global events to be reported. In fact, they make a good balance of national and international news and events. Some programs and sections of newspapers are dedicated for national events while others are for international news and events. I would say that would be a 60-40 rations in terms of national and international news and events in our media. How Values Can Change What kind of possessions show status in your country? Well, in our country a large house expensive and latest car, latest electronic gadgets are often considered to be the possessions of high status. Apart from that, a top position in a well-known company and exposure to media are two other things that people often consider as symbols of high status. Do you think it was different for your grandparents? I think it was not much different. The electronic gadgets would be the latest additions, though. During my grandparents' era, the symbols of status were land ownership, political influence, big houses, and expensive cars, which were quite similar as they are today. I guess the so-called status symbols are quite materialistic in our society and that's why it was not much different for my grandparents as well. The Consumer Society Modern society is often called materialistic. Why do you think this is? This is mainly because of our inclination to worldly success and competition to possess more than we need. The globalization has also affected our mentality to possess more and more than ever before. We compete with others and put too much concern about our status. The old ways of traditional life and values have declined alarmingly among the societies and we are following the trend without giving much consideration. The decline of family bonding and patriotism are also making us more materialistic. We feel proud to own a luxury car, latest cell phone and powerful parents while we think very less about the people who are suffering from daily basic needs. This mentality is like a virus and competition among us is also making it worse. Do you think consumerism is a positive or a negative development? The concept of consumerism causes a materialistic belief that the more materials acquired by an individual the better, implying an increased value placed on material possessions. In my opinion, this is a negative development. While millions of people are starving every day, others are changing their mobile phone and car every few months. The waste disposal has already become a huge issue and the increased usages of electronic devices are increasing the world temperature which is dangerous for the world. The consumerism also makes people more materialistic and thus they forget the traditions and values of their society. The Consumer Market What is the role of advertising? The true role of advertising is to promote a product or service among the potential consumers and customers. Advertising is particularly important to establish the brand reputation in the market and to allure people to purchase a product or to enlist to a service offered. Advertisement from non-profit organizations and the government often aim to create awareness on important issues among people. How do you think the Internet will affect buying patterns in the future? The Internet has already established its supremacy in the consumer market and a lot of people nowadays purchase products or services online. The e-commerce is booming and it is not far away when people would absolutely rely on online shopping than the conventional marketplace. The e-commerce websites are ever increasing and people no longer needs to go to a shopping mall to purchase the products he needs. 
the advancement in Internet technology will capture a major share of all trades and shopping done by consumers in the near future. Compare the people's attitude to media between now and the past 20 years. On the one side, now people have become less trustful to new features of media. Using of more developed technology and camera or editing, people can be defrauded far easier than the past. However, some may say that the Internet has caused citizens to be able to check all news in different resources on the web. For example, they can check the latest one on CNN or BBC website in seconds and compare it with what they heard on TV, while in the past the only resource was newspaper or television. I personally agree with the second group because I think we have more choices to assess and examine the authenticity of news. The traditional newspapers that were famous in last decade were the main source for news. TV and radio were two other media for news and communicating information and for entertainment as well. With the advancement of technology online newspapers, the internet and online TV have become more popular nowadays. Should we trust the journalists? I believe that we cannot solely rely on their reports. We have to check the authenticity of some news because reporting is a part of business, and employees may exaggerate an event based on their favorite or benefit. In this case, I have heard different news by different journalists about nuclear talks happened between Iran and six other countries recently. Furthermore, we should be very careful about some technical issues affecting the accuracy of a report. Some unpredictable problems may affect negatively the quality of a report. We should trust the journalist and their news to a certain extent but if the news has a chance to be influenced by political motives and personal benefits, we must rely on various authoritative sources as well as use our own brain. What do you think what a good journalist should be? Honesty, hardworking, and valuing other people's opinions are the most important characters. A perfect journalist must be able to work diligently without having any rest and be sensitive to the accuracy of his or her report which is being exposed to viewers. An honest journalist must understand that he is doing a responsible and sensitive job and that's why should not be biased or influenced. News and Media Do you think the information on the Internet believable or not? Well. I think the information available on the Internet is not always believable. Usually, all the information on the Internet are provided free of cost and they are useful for the common users. But sometimes there are some false or twisted information has also been found which are of no use at all and even if the Internet users believe them, they will invite disaster in their life. For instance, once I saw a speech on Internet quoting Abraham Lincoln saying, Everything posted on the internet should not be believed as true. How true he was. He was right actually. He was right indeed in the sense that during his presidency in the USA, there was no internet and even the invention of the computer was not done I think. So, how he could deliver such statements? That is the question of the day. The answer is very simple. In fact, Abraham Lincoln did not say such speeches and the statements have been made for confusing people and make fun only. Most of such information is posted on the internet to fool people or to gain some illegal interests. Sometimes people see different attractive information on the internet and work accordingly by believing them as true which leads them to a financial or some other types of damages. There are some online miscreants who post such deceptive and fake information to mislead the common internet users. Such miscreants aim to gain their own interest and the internet users should be careful of the issue. What is the most effective way of getting news? Yes, there are several ways to get news around you. The first and most important source of getting news is the mass media and television channels. But I prefer the television channels more than the newspapers for several reasons. Firstly, the events sometimes are telecasted live on the channels while the newspapers publish the issues on the next day. Besides, many of the newspapers provide fabricated news and work as an agent for the illegal authorities, and they also take benefits in return from the illegal authorities for the publicizing. As a result, the newspaper's readers get twisted information. 
the good people are made bad while the miscreants are altered from their actual position and a positive image is created for them. But in television channels, there are no such issues and the sometimes the events are live telecast. So, when one represents the misinformation the others present there impede the attempts. Moreover, being the age of technology, the emergence of online news websites is another important source for getting the latest updates. They instantly provide the news and event happening around us and the facts and information are reliable as well. So, in the current days, the demand of published newspapers is slightly decreased. However, people now rely on all forms of media to have the latest news and updates. How do reporters gather information? Well, this is a very good question. The reporters have to struggle a lot to collect information from different issues. They need to move from place to places to collect the information and also has to justify the news merit. Besides, they also have to justify the exact information as if the data they receive is misleading or not related to the issue they are dealing with, they cannot publish the news if they publish such reports which are misleading or incomplete. The newspaper or the news agency will start losing its credibility. Consequently, the newspaper or agency will lose its business as well. When an incident happens, usually the reporters rush to the spots and try to collect information on the issue. They ask questions to the people related to the incidents and events and thus collect information. Sometimes they need to cross-check the information if those are viable or not. After the justification of the information in several stages, they write the reports and publish on their respective media. During the information collection, they are to undergo different situations and most of the time they are to take risks of different levels. You know, sometimes they are even to sacrifice their lives during the information collection process. The scenarios turn worst in the war-torn areas and they travel in such areas risking their lives. But in the cities and urban areas, information collection is not that much difficult. Whatever the collection process is, they actually try to get the right thing and expose the issue before the public. What do you think of the importance of privacy? Uh, privacy is one of the top most important things in one's life. If there were no privacy, the situations would have turned awkward for us. There are some activities that we cannot perform before everyone and in those cases we need privacy. We cannot do everything in public. It looks indecent in the civil society. If we perform the things we ought to do in private, people will have a negative impact on their mind about us. Sometimes, they may also think that we do not have the personality or do not care for others and so. As a result, we may not be able to communicate effectively with them later or in our needs. In a word, we have to lose our respect in the society. For instance, bathing is the work to be done in a bathroom, not in a public place. But if you show no respect to the standard rules of bathing, inside of a bathroom, you would be neglected and may also turn into a laughing stock to all. You have to keep in mind that privacy is the thing that is a kind of cover for you to protect you from the evil things and evil doers. Consider yourself as a woman and you are bathing outside of the bathroom, then people will capture the moments in their cell phone cameras which will be embarrassing indeed for you. But you do want that happen. So, you have to follow the standards of privacy. How do journalists entertain their customers? The journalists try to entertain the readers of their newspapers with different news, reports or articles. Most of the time they try to collect the exclusive issues so that the readers or customers could get entertained and the newspaper or the television could have a good business as well. The customers are tending to go through the exclusive reports and it has been found that the reports of crime and entertainment are the most preferred by the customers. So, the journalists try to collect the information over the matters which are preferable to the readers. They travel to different places to collect the exact information and sometimes they spend more times in preparing the reports. The actual time frame is not set for such reports but when they are published or aired on the media, they create a sense of great satisfaction among the readers. What role do media play in people's life? Um. Media plays a great role in the life of people. 
In fact, the people are highly influenced by the media role. Media tries to expose different issues to the people and they accept the issues and become aware of them. For instance, media is publicizing over a murder and people are getting aware of that. They come to know about the murder and consequently become aware of the killing and the killers. Now if they see or meet the killers accidentally, either they will try to protect themselves from the killer or they will help the law enforcers in nabbing the killer. It raises a sense of awareness among the common people about the right and wrong. They learn to do the right things for their betterment. Besides, different advertisements are also aired or published on the media which also plays a great role in people's life. If I ask you to name a car, I can bet your reply will match with some sort of advertisements that you experienced earlier over car selling. The advertisements influence our minds subconsciously media exposes the advertisements to us. Further, we are informed about different happenings through the media. So, the importance of media in our life cannot be ignored. Rather media is influencing our lives from many aspects gradually. How do people in your country gather information? Actually, there are no direct sources of information in India to gather information for the common people except reading the newspaper and watching television. The newspaper has access almost everywhere inside the country and they serve with the reliable news. Besides, the satellite television channels also provide news and information of great interest. Sometimes, the young people are seen using the internet to gain information from different websites and they also rely on the online news agencies for information. But the trend is not that much appreciated by the adult people as they are in fact not attracted to the internet. The use of social networking site like Twitter, Facebook etc. also play a great role in gathering information and in those websites, the information spreads rapidly than imagination. What are the advantages and disadvantages of different media? There is nothing in the world without demerits and in line with the theory, the media also has some demerits too. Media at times provides fabricated information to create misconception in the society and thus increases the chances of anarchy. But not all the media should be blamed for the twisting information. Some of the media play the role of protector of the unscrupulous people and to save them from troubles, they publicize the modified news. As a direct result, the commoners get the wrong information and the principles of distributing free and fair information are hampered. But considering the benefits, the demerits are few. Media has a wide number of benefits. It always remains alert to spread news and information over different issues and help us become aware as well. Do you think it necessary to control the news coverage? Um, great question. I think sometimes it is necessary to control the news coverage and it should be done in the sensational issues. People usually turn eager to learn about the sensational issues like crime or entertainment. So, in that case, if the information is not the exact one, it would lead the audience into a wrong way. Thereby, in those cases, the reports should be monitored properly. What kind of news do you think should be controlled? Usually, crime reports like killings etc. are highly preferred by the audience and thus those reports should be controlled in a proper way. Sometimes due to misrepresentation of the information, the audience might turn agitated and it happens mostly in the communal issues. Communal riots can be fueled by the reports or some other cases a section of the society could also be made violent over any issues. Sometimes there is some news about the film industry and media spreads rumors which are not true in fact. Those issues should also be brought under strict monitoring. Survey and Opinion 1. What kinds of organizations want to find out about people's opinions? Thank you for allowing me to answer such an important question. Usually, different organizations need people's opinion over diversified issues and I think the government, advertising agencies or research organizations require the opinions most. If we consider the governmental issue, 
it is found that the government is always formulating some sort of rules or policies for the betterment of the people and to get a mass consent from the people for the better implementation of the rules or policies, it requires public opinions. Secondly, the advertising agencies require public opinions before or after launching any of their projects or products. Without a massive feedback from the targeted audience, it is impossible to expect the success of any products. Moreover, often the research organizations require public opinions to get informed about any specific issues they are involved with. Do you think that questionnaires or surveys are good ways of finding out people's opinions? I have a different opinion about questionnaires or surveys undertaken to get public opinions. I think in most of the cases, the exact information is not found in such surveys or interviews with questionnaires. It happens as most of the time the questions cannot represent the actual situations or they are unable to depict the entire scenario to the interviewees. Often the questions are made with wrong consideration and as a result, the exact answers are not found. Sometimes, the questions are too private to answer for the respondents and they turn reluctant in such situations, and if they are insisted on answering, they may provide wrong information which will damage the research. I think, not taking is the best ways to collect people's opinions. In such cases, a team of two individuals is appointed to talk with the people and note down the speeches. What reasons might people have for not wanting to give their opinions? As I said before that some questions are too private to answer. People usually try to avoid such questions and do not want to provide the exact opinions. Sometimes there are few questions related to the governmental policies and they also do not want to opine on the issues as those are potentially harmful to them. Besides, people do not want to share their information or opinion fearing that those issues may be publicized with their names. It is impossible to provide positive feedbacks most of the times and if those are publicized, they may have some detrimental impacts on their surroundings. Another important reason, I think, is that the data collector's failure to convince people over providing information during the data collection period. Since the data collectors are hired on a temporary basis, most of them are unskilled and non-professional and cannot represent the importance of the data collection process. Do you think it would be a good idea for schools to ask students their opinions about lessons? Um, yes, I think it would be a great idea. Most of the students do not want to learn lessons at home for several reasons and accordingly cut a sorry figure in their exams. A participatory environment could remove the problem to the greatest extent. If the students are asked to opine about their lessons, I think, they would tell about their problems. The most important thing here is that the kids do not want to feel ashamed about their lessons and thereby if they do not understand anything, they remain silent or do not express their inability to understand the topic lest the entire class laugh at him slash her. So, if opinions could be asked for their lessons, they will gladly participate in the process to avoid the complexities of feeling ashamed. What would the advantages for schools be if they asked students their opinions? There would be different advantages if the students are asked to describe their opinions. The first and important advantage, appears to me, is that they will be able to express their preferences. Some of the lessons might be difficult indeed for them and if the teacher asks questions from that specific lesson, there are chances that the students will fail to answer the questions and as a direct consequence, their scores will go down. Besides, if they are asked to opine, they will perform the lessons without any excuse. They would not have the chance to place any objections over the lessons as they decided that earlier. Moreover, when the school authority will ask students about their opinions, the students will start thinking that they are being evaluated by the school authority. It is helpful to expand their mental faculty. These are the few advantages if the school authorities ask about the opinions from the students. Would there be any disadvantages in asking students' opinions? Well, there might be some disadvantages in this case as well as nothing in the world is without disadvantages. In line with the good performers in a class, there are some naughty students as well who are always looking for chances to make a mess around. So, 
When the school authorities ask to opine about something, the naughty students try to take advantage of such events. They never agree with the other ordinary students and try to create a chaos in the class. Besides, there are some students, who believe them to be the best of the class, pushing their nose over the issues frequently and hardly allow the other ordinary students to express their opinions. So, asking opinions to the students is not always effective. But another issue should be considered that the opinion seeking is effective for the lower grade as they are not that much wild like the upper grade students.